Well, hi, good morning, and thank you so much for joining me in my shop today. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at this oscilloscope, the Diagnostic Oscilloscope, uh, made by B&K. Well, branded B&K, the actual maker of this is, uh, it says B&K, a division of Dynascan Corporation, Chicago, Illinois. So, this piece of equipment, this oscilloscope, is part of a set of equipment uh, that I've obtained uh, almost by accident, uh, which was intended for and, and used for servicing CB radios. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> CB radios. So this was probably uh, in, in use in the uh, mid to late 70s into the early 80s. I have to tell you here in Canada, uh, CB radio, at least in the area I live in, is an absolute zero. I, I you know, well, it's more than a, it's not quite a zero because I've got one. I actually have a CB radio operating all the time, hooked up to a lousy antenna, but it can receive. And I wait for Skip to come in from the uh, United States. I get a kick out of listening to the crazy Skip. Reminds me, and well, I'm going to the details, but reminds me of when I was a small kid. Okay. Uh, so I don't think there's anything too terribly unusual about this oscilloscope. It's a single channel basic oscilloscope, but it has an unusual feature here. Um, this thing. Intermittent analyzer. What in the heck would that be? And it would have taken me a while to guess what it was or what it is. But fortunately I have the manual for this scope too. And in here it talks about this feature. So what I hope to do today is uh, just test the oscilloscope, see that it works, and uh, experiment with this intermittent analyzer, which, which may be of some value here in my shop. Uh, it's kind of a, it's a very simple device here. It looks a little fancy here, light and the light and the light and a couple of controls, but it's actually quite a simple idea and designed to save uh, technicians time um, or make them more productive when they're facing a device with an intermittent problem. That's the idea of it. Okay, so I don't feel too much hesitancy in plugging this in. Um, it probably has a fuse at the back. So if anything really bad. Let's take a look, let's take a look at the back. Yes, there's a fuse. It's got an outlet. It's got nothing else back there. Usually there's a couple of other terminals on the back of a uh, scope. Uh, I'm just trying to untangle the cord here from the top. As far as I know, this scope hasn't been turned on in, well, we, like we, we could guess. Uh, 1985, take a guess. That would be, what would that be, 20, 30 years ago? probably been sitting idle for 30 years. Don't know that for sure. Its original residence was a shop, a repair shop, here in Aurelia. Okay, finally got it untangled. We're going to put this in the dim, dim bulbs here, just in case. Now, a little, little practice. Let's take a look at what we've got. Calibrate position. This is the vertical. This is the sink. Uh, negative internal, positive internal, external sink, and line. It does line sink. Here's the, and this must be the sink the sink level. This would be uh, the sweep rate, external sweep, line, and then we have a sweep uh, 10 to 50. 10, 10 must be. 10 per second, I guess. And up here we've got TV vertical and TV horizontal. So it's, uh, it looks like it's kind of intended for television repair. That's probably really what its target was. I, I can't imagine there was that much CB repair going on relative to television repair. Horizontal input, external sync signal, gain, and the big knob, and position here. What, what position? Or it must be horizontal. This is all vertical, all horizontal. It must be a horizontal position. It's 
put it in the middle. Gain will put straight up. Sync will put plus internal. Not that it really matters. Put that in the middle. Set this to a well, okay, 200 volts. That's pretty high. 0.2, not so low. So 20 volts. We're ready to go. Where's the on-off switch? It must be way up here on these these controls. So we have on and off. We have intensity. We'll put it about halfway. Focus halfway. Calibrate. Calibrate. What are we calibrating here? Calibrate control. This is the model 1450. I see there's quite a few videos on YouTube already on this uh, scope. Right? I haven't looked, I haven't like watched the videos. I tend to not watch other repair guys' videos um, very seldom uh, because it, I, I don't want to get all their ideas in my head. Doesn't that sound stupid? But there's no, no use me doing these videos if, if all I'm doing is relaying everything I found out from other people. I, I'd rather say stay stupid. Okay, here we go. Switch is off. Okay, power's on. Going through the dim bulbs just behind the fishtail there. What do we do? There's a power light here. Okay, you can see the dim bulbs come on awfully bright. This thing's uh, sucking back the power. I can't imagine it's full of tubes. I would think it's. it's it can't be full of tubes. I would be stunned moment. And we're running it now with uh, 87, 88 volts. Similar power draw to the last radio I was working on. So, Okay, so we have scale illumination. Looks like there's no scale illumination. That's kind of too bad. It's very hard to see the markings in here. Okay, uh, now, it may need a signal to trigger. Some scopes, when there's no signal, they trigger themselves, so you can see the line. The other scopes, with no signal to trigger them, they, they won't draw a line. I'm going to put this the sink onto line here. That should, that, should, that should cause it to go. That should cause it to go. Okay, more intensity. That's full intensity. Well, this is a sad showing at this point. Um, put this on line, so now it uh, sink. Sweep. Okay, so now I have the sweep on line. Before, when I described this as being the sweep, it's not. It's a sink. Okay, uh, come on, anybody. So with this on line, there should be, so this is this is the frequency and fine frequency. This is a sync and phase, sync and phase. Where's the trigger control? Where's the trigger control? Calibrate? Could it be a mile out of focus? That's not very likely. Well, this is disappointing. Um, not going to be a very good. Hey, you know what? I'm running this thing on too low a voltage. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. So, okay, intensity down. Everything else is good. Full voltage here. That this could make a big difference. Come on, make a big difference. Can you see a light flash there? So we're still on the line for, for sweep. Maybe it still needs a signal to, to trigger on. Look at it, we're going to give it one in a minute. But you would think you'd see something up here. Nothing. Oh. Okay, so now we can see the. Uh, it, it looks like maybe there's two bulbs in here, and the one on this side is working. This one's too dull. A little bit there. Hey, okay. Got the light to go. Fantastic. Let's just let's just work the controls and see if anything flashes on the screen. Any flickers? Oh. Well, why 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 would 
they wanted to do that. The scales are different. The scale goes from 0 to 2. The scale goes from 0 to 6. So here I'm on the 2. This is an unusual scope. Now I'm on the 6. And back on the 2. 6, 2, 6. Okay, we really got the lights going. But no... Uh, Um, so this control should have no effect on the scope's operation, I believe. So I will fool with it. <laughs> Just see. Just see the light come on there. Balance. Uh, come on, Mr. Scope. We have to put a signal into it. We need to put in a signal. Okay, let's put one in. In an AC signal, uh, some easy sort, like 60 cycles would be great if I could get at it easily. Can't quite do that. Uh, so let's let's use an audio signal here. Scale B, 1000. 1000 hertz signal of some reasonably high output. Though occasionally, you know what? Occasionally this, this guy has switch problems. But we need to verify. We need to verify it's working. Oh, uh, stick it on another scope. <laughs> oh, hey, that's not a stupid idea. We'll do that. Stick it on this other scope in the background here. I know it works. see the signal there and I'm going to prove it's the uh, we're looking at this guy here we're not we're not <laughs> well it's a fantastic signal I think it's a hum we're not grounded here it's going to be this little switch here this guy there that fixed it that fixed it really there it is. Filling the screen there. So that's uh, 5 volts per division, and I can fill the screen with this thing. So that's putting out a huge voltage. And is it for sure this? Yes, there we are. Frequency changing. Can you see it? Kind of see it. I'm just swinging this around. Okay. We have signal. We have signal. We will now apply this rather large signal of 5, 10, 15 volts peak to peak. That's a big guy. 15 volts peak to peak. Well, that's interesting. That came on. I'm not sure you can turn this on and off. Maybe you can't turn it on and off. So we'll just ignore it. Nothing on the screen though. Okay, intensity. Oh my gosh, there it is. It's up there. How do you like that? Um, it's way out of position. Where are the positioning controls? So this is a uh, horizontal position. Is this vertical? No. Gain and position. So you see the hor horizontal gain. This is, looks like a Lissajou figure going around up here. Oh, because I've got this set to line. Well, how do we how do we bring this guy down onto the screen? There we are. Oh, it says position right there. Position on the little knob. So there we have a very nice Lissajou, and I may be pronouncing his name wrong. 
Uh, this is interesting because when I was a kid in grade eight, I turned a regular television into an oscilloscope uh, with no sweep control. I won't go into the details of it, but I managed to get these kinds of diagrams uh, on my uh, TV screen. Very interesting, fooling around with capacitors that you can make them tip and turn them into circles and things like that. Um, so this is the relationship. Well, this thing has an intermittent problem. But how do you deal with that? The scope itself is intermittent. Um, if I, well, using 60 cycles, if I can change the frequency being supplied to the vertical to match the 60, we'll get a circle on here or, or something close to it. Probably dirt in one of these controls is causing things to jump. See, that looks very dirty in that control. And this is the sync phase. I'm still not really sure what this does. This shouldn't cause any effect on the screen. Cool. If you get a bit of a capacitance going in there, you can kind of get this thing to tip a bit, like this, and you can really see that it's actually a circle, a circle of stuff, like a crown being rotated. Yeah, now this intermittent indicator has nothing to do with what's going on on the screen here. It's just going to be some dirt and some control that I'm not quite getting to yet. A little focus. focus calibrate okay, I'm still not sure about must be maybe adjusting the vertical for calibrating the vertical somehow you need a standard voltage to do that okay I'm going to change the input frequency and see if we can turn this into a circle or something more like that okay it's one less hump down the frequency here. There you can kind of see the circle effect. It's tipped a little bit. There's the circle. Well, okay. Now if we can make this thing steady up. up if nothing was happening, nothing was moving. And that's a component problem inside. A phase, there's a phase thing going on there. External. Must be external for the larger knob, and the lower knob is always a phase adjustment. Sync external, sync internal, plus internal negative lines. This doesn't seem to do much. Maybe you have to set this somewhere. Vertical calibration. Calibrate. Oh, a square. Never had a square like that before. 
Yeah, now the calibration. So this is to calibrate, I guess, the. Uh, this is probably a standard voltage, 2 volt or something like that. Coming out of there. Well, other than the jumpiness going on. Phew. Definitely see dirt in the. Uh, One. Well, this will never do, not like this. So what do you do if the machine itself that's supposed to help you find your uh, intermittent has an intermittent itself? <laughs> and uh, as much as it's displaying the effect of the intermittent, I'm not able to to find what it is. None of that stuff. Okay, what about a shock? Yeah. Something loose inside. Shock at the back. Not much effect. Shock at the front. Shock in the middle. Never been so. This is the most clumsy troubleshooting I've ever done. I'm, I'm transmitting the shock. Who knows where in there? Uh, getting this guy out of his case. We're not going to do that today. So it's got a, a uh, panel here you can remove. Well, it makes for some interesting uh, displays, that's for sure. I think I knocked the focus off a little bit. Intermittent analyzer. What does this do? We'll keep it running here. Maybe it'll settle down with some time. So the idea of this is you are measuring a DC voltage. So we're, we're going to need a DC voltage here. And inside of a radio or something like that. Perhaps you're using an RF probe to generate the DC voltage and you're actually monitoring the RF signal going through. And the problem is an intermittent problem. That's a problem. And unlike this one, it doesn't act up very often. The intermittency occurs very seldom. So maybe every 15, 20 minutes, there's a few seconds of dropout uh, or something like that. So you hook up the oscilloscope uh, somewhere uh, in the circuit based on your understanding of the uh, block diagram, if I can put it that way, the different stages. So maybe you pick a stage and you hook up the scope. Now, in Without something like this, what are you going to do? You're going to have to stand there and stare at the scope, voltmeter, whatever it is, or stand and listen for when the thing happens. But the thing might not happen for three hours. What are you going to do? Stare at a scope like this for three hours? You get better things to do in your repair shop. This guy takes over. Let's get the DC voltage happening here. We're going to take it off the signal and we'll just pick up a DC voltage over here of some amount. 10 volts. 10, 10 volts. What is that we're seeing? I'm kind of just expecting a straight line automatically. Um, 10 volts. I don't think it should look like that. No, is that really 10 volts? Nothing. So 
a 20 volt scale. Oh, looks almost like the DC is being uh, done away with. With a, a uh, there's a capacitor. That's what it looked like. Look like this is an AC only machine. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I, I can't imagine. How can it be? How can it be an AC only machine? That just doesn't make sense. This isn't going anywhere. I got this online. Does it matter? Yeah, it would matter. We're sweeping. Wider. Oh. Oh my my. That's a bad sign. But I, I'm, I was getting a, getting the AC signal to go through. Is that what it is? It's a DC thing. It's a DC thing. We put this onto a fairly sensitive setting. When I disconnect it, the, if, the, the, if there's a capacitor involved, the screen will go like this and then come down again. Like that. And the other way, up and down. I don't see how you can make this work. Based on what I read, I'll tell you what, what I read is the objective here a little diagram, is you have some kind of voltage. That's my graph there. Here's the voltage going along over time. Time. Nice steady voltage, no problem, but it has the intermittent and occasionally the voltage does this. Drops low like that. And just happens to do it when the technician is looking away, is drinking coffee, I do that a lot. Drinking coffee, comes back, everything's still normal. But this had actually gone by in the meantime. So the idea of the scope here, or this this part of it, it's not really the scope. Did I, did I just do that? This, this shouldn't affect the scope. The idea is you have a high and low sensing circuit here, which can sense when a voltage goes high or low from a setting. The way you adjust a setting is using the balance control here, and the level control. And what you're trying to do, the balance control is doing this, and the level control is doing this. And you're trying to set this so the voltage is in the middle of this range. Then you might try to squeeze the range down, 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 like that. And as long as the voltage stays within that range, nothing happens on the scope. But if the voltage should go low, or go high, above or below the range setting, one of these two lights will come on. This says up, this says down. And this says intermittent indication. So what we would do is first we would, we would set this balance, set it on balance. This, and you know what? This isn't making a lot of sense here. Set it on balance. Then you got to work all these controls. Maybe that's what's going on. Oh my gosh, look at that. You want to set it in a spot where neither of these lights are on. I think, I think this is the dirty control here. Dirty, dirty, filthy control. We got the top one to come on. Old range. So where's zero? Zero's gone way off. Can you calibrate the zero on it? I don't think so. So obviously I can read the manual and find all this stuff out, but I want to get some hands-on experience. That way the manual, when I read it, will sink in a lot better than if I'm just reading about it. Well, that, yeah, I think I have to go read the manual at this point. So I, I did look through the part on intermittent analyzer, but I only read it once. You know, reading those things once isn't very helpful. 
So anyway, you, you set this to balance, you do the balancing trick somehow. I barely can't do it. This can't be part of it. It's just got to be this part. And once you have it set to balance, these lights go out. This light is out. You flip that to operate. You get out of town. And when you come back, you find this light is on and this light is on. And you know that while you were gone, the intermittent affected the point of connection of the scope. So now you know where you've connected the scope and the circuit that the intermittent exists there. Okay, so you're doing a localizing thing. So you pick another stage, maybe you go, I don't know which one, you go forward, you go backwards, whatever it is you want to try. And you're just going different stages, performing this test, waiting for the intermittent and finding out if it occurs at that location. Eventually you'll find out some locations the intermittent doesn't occur, other it does, and you can just start zooming in on where the fault is in the device. So this has application to anything, any device, provided I can learn how to operate it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go drink some coffee. I'm going to read up once again on the... Uh, well, let's just read the opening paragraph where they tell you what this is really for. Usually there's just a written statement. Introduction. The B&K Diagnostic Oscilloscope has been especially engineered for the service industry. The instrument includes all the important oscilloscope functions, plus a special feature, the intermittent analyzer in bold print. So this was the selling point for the scope for sure. What sets this scope apart from all others? It has this. Why is this valuable to a shop? Because your technician can be working on another job while waiting for the intermittent on this job. That's, that's the value of it. That's where the business value is. Signal voltage in the circuit under test can be monitored and when a change occurs above... What was that? So something clicked inside. The intermittent light came on. So it's not like probably a relay latching to hold these in. That's probably what that is. How do you reset? I'll, I'll read the manual at this point. But let's just keep reading the introduction here. A signal voltage in the circuit under test can be monitored when a change occurs above or below the preset level and indicator lamp turns on. In addition, the direction of the change up or down is indicated by two additional lamps. So that's the indicator lamp. Well, it says indicator <laughs> right on it. And this is up and down. Up or down. Well, up or down would refer to the screen here. Well, I mean, but if you hook the wires the other way around, up becomes down. Up and down. I guess they had to put something here. They couldn't. If they put plus and minus, they really get in trouble. So they used up and down, vague terms on that. Up and down would mean something to the person using the machine because they know how they've hooked the wires up into the device. And external. An external accessory intermittent monitor can be connected to the instrument to alert the technician when the intermittent occurs. This permits the service technician to monitor a piece of equipment in which an intermittent condition exists while he works on another set at a different bench. So basically they're telling the repair shop double the money. Yeah, this thing is its own intermittent. Comes complete with its own internal intermittent. The vertical attenuator in conjunction with the illuminated graticule permits the scope to be used like a VTVM when making peak-to-peak -peak measurements. Two scales, 0, 2, 0, 06 representing vertical ranges on the switch. Yeah, these scales, and left and right, blah, blah, blah. Let's just talk about these scales here. As simple as reading the meter on a VTVM. That, that, now, the, the owner of the shop is thinking, is my technician smart enough to operate this thing? As a further aid to TV service man, two TV sweep positions are provided. And these built-in sync separator synchronizes in these positions, a built-in sync separator synchronizes the sweep. This allows the service men 
now it's men. They had more than one guy doing it. So service man at the start, but now it's service men to flip from line sweep to field sweep merely by throwing one switch. Just one switch. Field sweep. What is field sweep? Caution. Never allow a small, high-intensity spot to remain motionless on the CRT screen. If this precaution is not followed, the CRT screen can be discolored or burned. Yes, I'm well aware of that. Goes over the knobs. I'm not going to go through all this. So there we are. Oh, it's talking here about uh, probes and accessories. I, know that. I think I have some of those. And explanations of how the use of these are... Uh, signals out of television sets, old te television sets. These complicated video signals with uh, that need to be parsed inside the television set. Here's the intermittent analyzer. Yeah, they're showing the block diagram and they're showing different places you could perform it. You could hook this guy up to look for the intermittent somewhere among the built-in intermittent. There we are. Sensitivity of intermittent analyzer. Use of up and down lights as out of range indicators. Vector scope connections. Well, that's interesting. Vector scope connections. Uh, there's a Y input. There's a Y input down here, I think. Horizontal input. So you got vertical and you got horizontal. You can you can do these weird, or you get more Lissajou diagrams of a sort. And here they're referring to some kind of book. 101 Ways to Use Your Oscilloscope by Howard Sam, Sam's Produ Productions. Practical Oscilloscope Handbook. I have one of those, I think. Okay, there we are. She's just working away like crazy all on its own. Probably not harmful to leave it operating, but I'm not going to, because I'm going to leave the room. Well, that's a little disappointing, jumping around, but it might just be dirty, dirty, dirty something that it can be cleaned up. And, uh, good. I'll read the manual. If something super exciting happens, then maybe we can sort that out. Okay, read through the instructions a couple more times. Uh, right now, the scope is hooked up to the audio signal generator here. And uh, one thing, to use the intermittent analyzer, you must have a screen full of signal. You've got to get a lot more signal onto the onto here, so we can um, first of all let's see if we can just get a little better. There, that that's a little more of a normal looking thing. We can expand it like this. Oh, that's pretty nice. I like that. The sync here is referring to the uh, sync signals in television sets, so I think it plays no role. Is finding out it does no no particular role uh, in doing something like this with just an audio signal. So we need this bigger. That's bigger. Look, the light came on here, but it's not. It's on operate. We'll put this on to balance. Now the objective here. We have a big enough signal. Here's a diagram showing a large signal, medium signal, small signal. Yeah, they're all different types of television signals. Uh, we're, we're doing this, but we make this big like this. I'll put the best effect. So now uh, I think we're turning this until we get rid of both lights. There. Incidentally, the large click that occurred uh, earlier when I was playing with this well, it was a relay operating, but it's a relay turning on the outlet, the uh, accessory outlet that's on the back of the, of the scope. So the idea is you could plug a lamp in there, like a light, or something that's going to make sound, and when the intermittent occurs, the light will come on, or the sound will come out, or radio will start playing, whatever it is you decided to use, draw your attention from the other side of the shop. That's one step away for me. And you can run over. It, if this light's on, then it's had a variation in the signal greater than 10 or 20 percent, depends how, how big the signal is. And it will remember if it was up or down, signal-wise. Now the signal is jumping around. 
You know, I don't have this plugged into a grounded outlet. Oh, maybe that's the deal. Yeah, let's let's just yeah, let's put this into a grounded outlet here. Because my bench power supply over here is uh, in an isolation transformer. Let's plug it into a regular outlet. Could that be a problem? We'll see. still wandering around with my hands off it. I am standing back. I'm watching it. What exactly is going on there? I don't know. Yeah, it's a little difficult to use a scope that does this kind of stuff. Okay, so we, we have this set now. We do we have it set. We'll switch it to operate. Can it see its own intermittent? Twenty twenty percent variation. Now it's not supposed to be this wobble. Of course the wobble I think is the scope itself. It's supposed to be the variation in the uh, strength of the signal. Th this coming on probably indicates I haven't quite got this balanced as well as it could be. Because the funniness up here doesn't seem to relate to the way the light goes. So I will manually turn down the signal level and we'll see if we can trigger this intermittent light down here. Low light is on. And so we be no. Can we make the upper light come on? Yep. Yeah. Why, why didn't it trigger? Why, why didn't it snap? We've heard it do it once. Selector and level. Well, it strikes me it should have triggered this relay like it did the one time. So what if, what if I just evaporate the signal briefly? Uh, sensitivity. The sensitivity of the inter intermediate analyzer to changes in signal level is variable with certain limits. Refer to figure 13. We already did. We looked at figure 13. The trigger limits of up and down are independent of the amplitude of the signal being monitored. Consequently, if the signal level is high, a small percentage change in the signal will trigger it. Okay. Thus, by using the calibrate control along... Oh, the calibrate control. Oh, I didn't calibrate this, this machine. La. Let's go back. And give it the calibration. The calibration. The calibration procedure. Turn the unit on, adjust scale illumination, set vertical range to the vertical calibrate position. Oh, that 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 that, that turned on the relay. Let's turn this back here. Uh, vertical calibration position. Uh, note zero to two scale is lit. 0 to 2 scale is lit. Set horizontal gain to minimum. Horizontal gain to minimum. Adjust intensity and focus for best appearance. Use the horizontal position control to position the line on the 0 to 2 scale. Adjust the calibrate control so the line is exactly the same length as the 0 to 2 scale. The vertical position control will also have to be adjusted to the so the lowest point of the line touches the zero scale. So it, I mean it's jumping all over the place. So there's not much I can do here. But you see, calibrate makes it smaller, makes it bigger. So maybe somewhere around here. So that that's sort of calibrated. I don't think that it's 
going to make much difference on, let me go back here, 20 volt scale, and we want the sweep going again. Don't we? What happened to the sweep? What did I do with the sweep? What, what did I do with it? Hello, sweep. Oh, horizontal gain is minimum. Okay, that's what it was. I gained it out to nothing. There we are. I have a nice signal jumping around on there. And the scope is now calibrated. Well, this guy should operate. Well, I wonder what the bouncing is from. Okay, so we will uh, adjust this to give us no lights. Flip to operate. Okay, now, now I can go have my coffee. You know, it seems to be detecting things but not triggering the uh, intermittent. Okay, we're gonna intermittent and back again. Intermittent the other way. Ooh, that worked. The intermittent light stays on now no matter what, although this continues to just show you the live effect. So this is not a memory sort of thing, but this this is. And you know you can hear the relay snap back there, so it's latched. How, how do you unlatch it? You would unlatch it by turning this back to balance. There we go. How high up does it have to go to cause that? We'll go up slower this time. Well, it's a long ways up. We can do it. And down. And then up. So there's a rate effect here. The rate of change is affecting it. Interesting machine. There's some heat coming out of it. So it's got to have... Oh, I can see tubes in there. Oh, I can see quite a few tubes. One, two, three, four, three. Lots of tubes up in this area here. Oh, what happened there? Maybe the ground has come loose. How did that all happen? That could be something going on with my uh, signal generator. Yeah, I think that's probably what it is. It's really meant to be operated at much higher frequencies, so so maybe even though this is just audio, I'll take it way up in frequency. Okay, I'll try to set this again. Okay. Operate. Wow. And signal gone. Back, signal going high, 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 way high. Signal going crazy high. Come back for my coffee break. No, nope, nothing happened. No intermittent problem. I'll move the connection to another spot in the radio and continue on. <laughs> yeah, misleading. You're doing these kinds of tests and you get misleading information uh, back from it. Okay, I think that's it for the scope testing. Uh, this scope's got problems. Don't know for sure what it is. It might still be just just dirt in one of these controls doing this. It's possible. Uh, it could be uh, like a tube in a tube socket because there's tubes in there. So I think tomorrow we'll probably take the cabinet off and have a look inside and see if we can sort this out. Because if we can settle this down, you know, this might be a useful tool. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, little, a little large for... <laughs> <laughs> putting in your toolbox and taking with you but maybe I can find some place for it here or at least I bring it out when it's needed and use it yeah so that's what I'll do tomorrow we'll look inside see what's in inside this guy and see if we can't settle down the, uh, the, the thing settle down the thing thanks a lot for watching and uh, see you uh, tomorrow <laughs>